We are moving our attention to one of the trending Nollywood movies on Netflix at the moment, Uloture. It's a movie inspired by a Premium Times investigative journalist, Tobore Uvore, who went undercover as a prostitute to expose human trafficking and finds a world of exploited women and ruthless um, violence. I like the intention, which is to shed light. Why are you laughing, if you're <laughs> The intention is all that matters, too. <laughs> I love the intention. I mean, to shed light on human trafficking in Nigeria and mm. um, rape, of course, mm. prostitution, and um, things in that bracket. And um, kudos to them for doing that, which would definitely lead us to that conversation in a bit. However, this story, I think, could have been, sto could have been told and tied up in a better way. Um, they're acting, you can't take anything away from them because they put in their best based mm. on whatever script you told, told them and what you expected of them. Um, but I didn't feel fulfilled watching this movie. I think it could have been executed better. A team, F. Young was seen once um, where he was asking for his 15... I mean, I don't want to spoil the movie, so mm. I'll put out spoilers, but a lot could have been done better. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I watched it yesterday. I don't know. I don't know. I was expecting it to be terrible and, like, it would have for me to watch, mm -hmm. but I enjoyed it. Okay. I actually, <laughs> I actually did. I was waiting for, like... Okay, there are little details, which is standard Nigerian movies. Wow. Where so our standard now. <laughs> it, was, it was, you know, just a bit, like, slow. Like, they, they're choking you. You're almost going out of breath. And as soon as he lets go, you're running. Not even, like... You know, there's just little details. But in terms of the actual storyline, I think it was really fine. Even the way that wow. they put... Um, those stars and not necessarily I, i've noticed that here in nigeria when they put a big star you mm -hmm. expect them to have a grand role and they'll be really important i kind of liked that they put a lot of important faces all over the scene mm -hmm. without really m making them feel more as in giving them too much mm -hmm. uh, i don't know if you get what i'm trying to say like giving them yeah. too much roles just yeah. look like a bunch of a-list artists doing their role mm -hmm. finish mm -hmm. i really like that i enjoyed it Obviously, this person that did the cinematography and the directing mm -hmm. has been influenced heavy by Hollywood standards because he really yeah, executed that. Even the yeah. chasing of the um, characters and the moving of the screen while there's a still shot, mm -hmm. all of that. If you went, to, if you did film school, just with Anton, just e eating up his his studies and mm -hmm. his curricula, really, really good. In terms of the storyline. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was okay as well. Personally okay. speaking, mm. I think it was okay. I think they did a good job in, right. in depicting the story. Obviously, there's, there's probably fiction into it. But I think it, I think it was realistic. It wasn't mm. a movie. It wasn't like... I don't know. It wasn't fictional. It seemed like something that could have just genuinely happened. I think Olotere was built up as a very smart girl. So smart. That at the point where she took the drugs mm. and was raped... It became so unrealistic to me. Nobody's above mistakes. Mm. Okay, fine. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, that part was a bit weird. Like he wouldn't drink, <laughs> he wouldn't drink an alcohol. You see, that's what I'm saying. Those things for me is not really the storyline. It's the details. Like you wouldn't drink alcohol that they served in front of you, but you would take a pill, pill that you didn't see the name of the pill. Like yeah, but you see, in the, 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 part. In the but in the, you see, the thing is, in the um, grand loud. scale of things, mm. if you look at me, maybe it's because my my mother is also in human trafficking, and I've been fortunate enough to meet some of these people. On the grand scale of things, it is very, very possible to mm. be that naive. Mm. There's people who have seen signs and just shake it off. And we've all done that. We've shaken things off. It's just that what, what we happened to shake off didn't cost us our lives and our freedoms. But I've seen people who have noticed that like, okay, there's a story of a, of a lady that was trafficked by her best friend and she was in an apartment mm. that was supposed to be hers, but there was no furniture there. And she was there mm -hmm. for two or three days and could have escaped. Why wouldn't you think that? A furniture, a house that was just empty isn't necessarily like legit or something like that. People look at that lady and say, that was really stupid of you. If you made a movie, like, why were you in a place where there was no, not even one plug or whatever, and you think that that's your friend's apartment? It's easy for us to sit down and think that, but because it's happened so many times, I think it's legit reason of why, okay. how mistakes can happen. That just really did Let's have a guest to carry on the conversation. Okay, yeah. so a lottery for me is not um, educative. That's mm. the word. Okay. In the sense that, um, okay, maybe for people that do not know a thing about human, human trafficking, trafficking yeah. maybe it could be educated, but not for, I don't think I'm their target audience mm, in this right. story. I think their target audience is the grassroots people that mm. do not even know about this What thing. would you have wanted to Just see? Just put 
the word out there. I didn't learn a thing new. I didn't learn about, okay, so they showed us how these girls were desperate, how they moved from one old house to another, mm -hmm. how they um, got pimped, how they were, um, domestic violence was shown, mm -hmm. um, how they were naive, how they, the politicians, they touched on a lot of subject matters that are mm. very, very important. Talking about the politician, where the guy went to beat up the politician and say, I'm coming for you, I'm coming. Well, I said, they said there's going to be part two. Maybe the well, part two like, like I was saying, they touched on a lot of things that could have been handled a whole lot more if I was their I mean, target if it was and a people like... documentary about about human trafficking would be a different conversation. Uh, but it's, it's inspired by, by a life story. It's, it's inspired by a investigative journalist mm -hmm. story. But That's the good thing is we are having the, the investigative journalist as, tomorrow, yeah? Yes. And I think that conversation will be quite interesting. But because of time what, and because uh, we have guests... Well, I, okay, go on. You want to say something quickly? No, I just wanted to drive on my point, but we can move on. Okay. All so, I'm just saying is that the movie could have been executed better and I a whole agree lot with more you on could that have been one, said. Actually. But, but joining us okay. with more things, I think we can explain. Joining now. us to discuss the menace called human trafficking in Nigeria is Dorothy Njemanzi. She's a human rights activist, filmmaker, and co-founder co of Dorothy Njemanzi Foundation. She was lead plaintiff in the Dorothy and three others versus Federal Republic of Nigeria case contesting gender-based violence by state actors on women in Abuja that yielded a landmark judgment citing the Maputo Protocol as the ECHO was caught in 2017. Hello, Dorothy. Hello. Hi, thank you for um, thank having me on. Yeah, you. hi, thank you for having me on. Thank you for joining us. So, can you hear me? Yes, we can, definitely. Let's talk about um, human trafficking in Nigeria. Based on your experience and um, what you know, where would you say we are right now in coming this um, situation? Well, I think for now, every day is a progress. Um, yeah, every day is a progress for now. The difference between keep on manifesting, keep manifested only a particular way. But now more and more people are seeing that there could be similarities but there are peculiarities story. Mm -hmm. and so each story should be treated on its uh, you know with uh merit and while we're treating story on the really are remedies it takes um it, it takes teamwork to cover human trafficking different people at different points in time you know come to play for human trafficking to be um to be uh, addressed and so yeah that's where we are with human trafficking at the moment. Thank you so much. NAPTIP is doing good. NAPTIP could do better with a lot of support from all of us. All right. Um, I, I know there's there's a different, like you mentioned, where every story is particular, but I, peculiar rather. I think a lot of the times from what I've seen, it's grouped into two. The ones who are genuinely naive and think they're going to go mm. and, you know, do hair braiding at Italy. And then there's some people who are ready to risk it all for, you know, a better life. If that means, you know, having a hard, because the, the idea is that they already have a hard life anyway. So why not, can't I just do it mm -hmm. and get get better. How would you say we can go about, um, you know, desensitizing that in people's ideas? Like, what can we offer to girls who've in, who are in that category that are willing to actually embark on a journey so dangerous? Well, how dangerous a journey is, people really underestimate these things very much so many times. I admit that there's people who deliberately go into sex work and they feel, oh, um, while they're into sex work, that it, it's, it will pay them better to do sex work outside the shores of Nigeria. I also admit that there are people who go in thinking that um, they're going to do some other thing, but at the end of the day, they are forced to do sex work and that's where trafficking comes in. Mm. So even with those who go in trying to do sex work realistically, the conditions that they, they end up facing, once it's uh, turns out to be things that they did not envisage, they have a right to opt out. Mm -hmm. Where you cannot opt out of anything, then that's where um, the law admits mm -hmm. that your rights are being violated. That's where the law admits that you didn't consent to doing something. That's where the law is supposed to come in and save you. So irrespective of it, um, what, whatever the situation, how about we, we give people more things here to, to latch on to? 
um, uh, programs that are available to youth here are, could, be be could be better handled. Access to funding by youth to do businesses, legitimate businesses, is something that needs to be built on very, you know, a lot, a, a lot better. Um, and when youth have access to do business, the environment within which youth can do their businesses should be also made better. I mean, because of your dressing, because of your gadgets, you cannot continually be targeted by law enforcement and have your business go well. If you're consistently detained, you know, most of the time in a month when you could have been working, your intended output would be different. So by, uh, for what it's worth, we need deliberate investment by governments in youth. That's one. And then an enabling environment for people to do businesses here. We need power. We need um, different things. You know, without power, a lot of people's businesses won't thrive. So we need deliberate, conscious um, investment in the government. In supporting All right. Thank it. you. Thank you very much for that. So um, we've seen what um, Abike Dabiri has been doing, which is the CEO and chairman of um, Foreign Affairs and Nigerians and the Diaspora. And um, she's been doing a lot, especially when we saw the Libya girls that were brought back to Nigeria, the ones who cried out for help, that they wanted to be brought back after human trafficking. So we know that the government is fully involved in this. But um, do you think that um, there's still a lot of people that are still naive and then we're not getting to the grassroots? A lot of people will still say that, okay, their kids need to travel out of the country and they're promising them jobs and all that what education or what's planned since we know that that is what a lot of nigerians are involved in and they want their kids to be involved in that what plan do you think the government should put in place for people to be aware that okay there are legitimate sources there are legitimate agencies that are government approved that for you to take your wards or your family members or whoever that wish to travel abroad to go work because sometimes some people choose that as a path of career and in other countries people are doing well with it so what do you think the government should do differently um we have the National Orientation Agency. The quality of what the National Orientation Agency puts out needs to be improved upon. I am of a very strong opinion that more and more every week, every month, every two weeks, we should see content reminding people of the realities of trafficking. Now, when we think about trafficking, let me remind us that trafficking doesn't happen only outside the shores of Nigeria. Mm. There's a lot of trafficking happening within Nigeria. Nigeria. People are trafficked daily to the big cities in Nigeria. Mm. And so it means that the messaging of trafficking should be constant in the public places, the airports, the bus stations, mm. um, the train stations, mm. all these places, the motor parks. We don't have enough trafficking messaging around so that people know how to get whatever help exists. We don't need to wait until there are disasters or documented disasters before we become proactive. We need to have something proactive all the time. And then for the people who, you know, um, are considering options, because as I speak to you today, families are considering selling off their property to send, you know, their family, support their family members to go, go to um, somewhere that they feel is going to be better for whoever to start up. Some of those people are going to other parts of Nigeria. Some people are going out of Nigeria. So the question is, where are they going to? How legit is it? And in the event it's not legit, what, 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 what options do the people have to respond to safety? And that's why I say in, more and more in public places where there's high trafficking and where there are you know, places people travel from, we should have more messaging around trafficking in those places. Mm. Very frequently, weekly, um, twice a, week, a month, something of the nature. We should have dedicated messaging around trafficking to remind people of the different ways trafficking can manifest. Okay. These are very practicable things that can be done to, you know, remind people, especially considering the fact that many people do not know the realities of trafficking. Mm. We could have these things broken down to the basic symptoms as, or, or, um, as simple as, say, People could offer you jobs when you're offered a job. If you go and in the first month, you're not able to see this and you're not able to speak to your family member the first, second, third month, raise alarm. These are practicable things that people can do. But do they know? No, they don't know. So the National Orientation Agency is a strong ally that we can use to ensure that such messaging goes out. 
And by the way, thank you all for the work you do, because many people just by watching this will be better informed about human trafficking. Thank you. Thank you very You're much, Dorothy, for your time. Thank you.